read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hey lady listeners welcome welcome we're going to talk for a little bit before we get started, but we have Joanna Blake with us this week, and she's brought us yeah. bacon, and we're super excited. You're going to get the second half in just a little bit, but first, we're going to talk. What are we talking about today? I have two things I want to talk about. Number one is, so we finished writing a student-teacher romance. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to call it yet, but... We have a couple of ideas. <laughs> I thought yeah. of a new one the other day. I wrote down your ideas, but then one popped in my head. What is it? I thought, teach me. <laughs> oh, I like that. I think there's, I'm sure there's a book called that. But like, It sounds really familiar. I was like, but no, I'm thinking I don't about. Know. It, I don't know where it came to me. I think it was on the treadmill or something. I was like, I like oh, that. teach me. Mm -hmm. I like, that's dirty. Yeah. Gonna get dirty. So we were writing that the other day and that's going to come out. Oh, actually, I can tell you when and around that's going to be out since I have it up on our calendar. Um, it's going to be out uh, the end of September. So September 24th is what we have scheduled right now, loosely. So check around those dates. Um, anyway, so we're writing it and you had just written your part. And I got to the end of your chapter and she said, like, he got naked and she got naked as she goes down on her knees. And I was like, oh, I guess we're doing a blowjob. <laughs> like, it was the funniest thing when I said it out loud. It's like, all right, I guess I give him a blowjob now. <laughs> I like, no, I said I'm getting one. That's what I said out loud. Oh, okay. I guess I'm getting a blowjob now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not writing that. I'm out of here. <laughs> They don't call it a job for nothing. <laughs> oh, my God. I just giggled, like, to myself in my office alone, and then I wrote it down to tell you that. <laughs> that's how much of an idiot I am. And the other thing that I have, that's our discussion for today, is on uh, the end of last week's podcast, you said free Britney, and I thought she was free. Like, I thought she was free of her dad. And I think he's stepped down. He's like, I can't, I haven't I know, read anything I haven't recently. Mm -hmm. Like, I haven't checked up. Something new could have come out. But I remember him saying he was going to step down. Yeah. And everybody got all excited. And then it was, he said, I'll step down when the time is right. Mm -hmm. But that said, she's slowly getting rights mm -hmm. back. Like, so, something happened with a housekeeper the other day, but, and the dad said, I have no idea what's going on in that house right now. So mm -hmm. things are changing. Good. And she got, she's been dry. She got to drive again. She mm -hmm. got her license back yep. and things are changing. So I don't know what he's in control, what not. I bet she feels so good. Probably. Okay. I mean, it's nuts. So oh, we've mentioned so this before, but she's with this little guy, like this boy toy she's got is her boyfriend who we think, may have been paid to be her companion over this time. But no, no, I don't think he's on the dad's side. No, I think that he, he used to be, I don't think the dad likes him. Oh, I think, okay. So you no, think he I don't think used the dad to be an escort? No, I, I believe, yeah, to a s extent, if you used to follow those, the dirty and stuff back then, mm -hmm. he was on the equivalent of like a pay to play. Yeah. So I always felt like he latched on to her. Mm -hmm. for stardom which you know so, maybe they fell in love maybe i'm maybe wrong. I but don't i'm know. always suspicious of men so especially men with people like her where she's been taken advantage of her so long i am shocked that if she didn't have i mean she had everything taken away from her how could they not take this from her too you know like why was she allowed to have this that's why i feel like okay he stayed within the parameters because he was being paid to that's the only thing. I don't thing know. I'm He's like, running his mouth. He doesn't like the dad. He's slipped up a few times and said some shit. So. I don't know. So, that's no. why I'm just shocked that like they could they couldn't they didn't find a way to keep him from her. Is all I'm shocked about cuz I mean as much as the dad like put an IUD in her, like how how hard it would it have been to keep this guy out of her life? I don't. But I don't anyways, know. so she made a post the other day and said like, hey, Fast and Furious, don't miss out on your next big star. And I was like, oh, that's so cringy that she's like, like she's trying to get him a job. But oh yeah. after I thought about it, I thought, I'm going to make a list of men that I think Britney Spears should date. And you're going to tell me on a scale on one to 10, 
how good of an idea you think it is. Uh, okay. Each man, okay. Am I, I going to know list. these men? Yes. Yeah. I made sure they were people you would know. Okay. Okay. First up, this is, this is what I call low hanging fruit. It's the easy grab. Brad Pitt. No. No. Why not? No. Give me a one to 10 scale. How on how, okay. You would love this one to five. Let's do one to five. <sighs> Matt Damon. Or, sorry, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt mm -hmm. has a lot of demons. But he's sober now. Is he going to stay sober? I worry. I don't know. I don't know. People I mean, do. I don't know. If he's like, maybe. I don't know. Okay, what one else to do five. That? How do you feel about this? One to five. Is he like a five three is or two? Yeah, five's great. One's terrible. Three. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. All right. Jamie Foxx. Oh. A four. Okay. I kind of like him. He's I like, he's a dark horse. The I only feel thing like that ever pissed me off about him is I was in love with him and um, what's her face? Katie Holmes. The, Katie Holmes. Yeah. And right after they broke up, he started fucking some 20 year old, like I two know. seconds later. I'm no, like, dude. Come okay. On. So we'll lower him a little bit. <laughs> but he right. seems so wise. All right, this is your guy, Chris Evans. Mm. How do you think he would be, Brittany? God, yeah, I would. As much as I love Chris Evans, I think he could be very stable for her. Mm -hmm. Yes, he could be very stable for her. I feel like she needs a little bit of a daddy. Yes, he could do yes. that for her. Yes. All right, but he See, really likes his. I don't think he. I feel like Brittany needs a little bit of somebody to boss her around, mm -hmm. and I don't think that Chris no, Evans would, is that way. Right. He's very liberal. Mm -hmm. He's very think for mm -hmm. yourself. All so right, I don't know so if he can give her that. I don't think he'd be much better than a three on that, just for compatibility's sake. Yeah, I like the idea, but I don't know if I like them together. All right, my next one. Speaking of daddy, John Hamm. Do you know who he is? That he was in Mad Men. Oh, he's yeah. a daddy. He's bossy. Yes. Yeah. Like very, very strong personality. Yeah. I love them. I love the idea of them together. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Now I want to think of some myself. Okay. Hold on. We're, we're still going. I have a long list. Oh, okay. So, well, it's not long. There's, I think there's like 12. Okay. All right. So John Hamm, how do you feel? One to five. Four. No, no, that's a good one. All right. Speaking of um, Brad Pitt, Bradley Cooper. Mm. He like he and Brad Pitt, they held each other accountable. They're like each other's sponsors, so to speak, in their sobriety. Like Brad Pitt said that Bradley Cooper was the one that helped him get sober. Yeah. I'm just like, I feel like Brad Pitt or Bradley Cooper might have a lot of baggage. That's the only yeah, thing. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm With thinking. He has a lot of baggage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably a three. All right. Okay, Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh no, get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> but no, she is all, three times too old for him. Uh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but I feel like he's so shallow. Like he would want to say that he fucked Britney Spears. Probably. And yeah. he would he would do whatever she he would give her whatever she wanted, like whatever she asked for. He'd just give it to her, and he'd be a little mean. <laughs> <laughs> mm, how do you feel about that? One to five. A one. Okay. All right, this one's like a little sweetheart, Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. I feel like he'd be very tender with her, but still in charge. Yes, I like that one a lot. That's mm -hmm. my favorite. Yeah, that's it. You said it's a five. That's your I only want to give like the perfect a five, but on okay. my list, out of those, he's mm -hmm. the five. Okay, okay. Next is now this one, another dark horse, Jared Leto. Little crazy. <laughs> That's why I think they would be well together. They're both a little fucking crazy. Two. Okay. Lenny Kravitz. Huh. Musicians. These are all single men, by the way. This can all happen. What do you oh, think? God, about? that's a good one. I know. He's a musician. He's very he strong. He's, he's very, very wise. I know he's very loving. He's all about family, his kids, his his ex wife, Jason Momoa. Like he's yeah, I know like, he's su like super family man. Like very cool and calm, but got a big old. I would dick. put him up there with Jake. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. a good one for her. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, one. this one. Hear me out, Liam Neeson. <laughs> yeah, it's five, five. <laughs> 
Five. Five. <laughs> like, That's right. Kind of picture her and me. I know. I know. Still, listen, the last one's my five. Okay, the last okay. one's my top one. So Liam Neeson, I love the idea of them being together. Only I because do too. He's Irish, so you know he's like really stern and like just won't take shit. No, won't tolerate anybody giving her shit. Will take care of her. Will fuck her. Like that, I love that. I love that. The way Ben Affleck's acting lately, I would pick him too right now. Right now, yeah, but not not if he breaks not up. All the time. When he, the second he breaks up with J Lo, we're done with him. He's trash. <laughs> That's true. All right, my last one is my favorite. This is my okay. favorite. Colin Farrell. No, they fuck already. No, Colin Farrell and Britney Spears. Yeah, Google it. <gasps> no. Yeah, Google it. They went to a, even a premiere together. That makes me so sad now. I really like that. What if they get back together? What if they pull a Ben and J-Lo? Mm -mm. No, you don't like I like them together. I feel like he's dirty. Really? Mm -hmm. God, but maybe it's just because I'm obsessed with him ever since that sex tape came out where he ate that woman's pussy. Like oh, the whole God. video. And he just talked about how good it was. Oh, my God. That is true. I forgot about that video. I watched that like two days ago. No shit. <laughs> I was looking all this up. I was like, oh, look where we stumbled. No, oh, no. <laughs> we're just in the rabbit hole now. Now I want to think about this. I want other people this. I feel like we're forgetting okay. some good older men. But there are good older men, but single. That's the thing, too. Like, you have to think single, single. that also, but that, that are older and they're more established. Like, it's harder to find that. Like, I think Hugh Jackman would be incredible for her because Get he's off sweet of Hugh Jackman. Kind. He loves his wife and they've been together forever. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, you wouldn't want to break up a marriage. Like, yeah. if you can't make a home break one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen. So, we're we're down for Jake Gyllenhaal or Liam Neeson. I am 100% for Liam Neeson. I think she needs a daddy daddy. I think she needs somebody that's at least 20 years older than her. Yeah. At least 20 years older than her. That has tons of money, is low-key, but yeah. will let her go off. Like, if she wants to burn all her fucking money, you know, be with her family. I love that. I love Lenny Kravitz. I love that. He's yeah. a musician. I feel like the music she would make after fucking him would be incredible. We'd have old Britney back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He would fuck old Britney back to life. <laughs> Uh, that's what I want to say. Free Britney, fuck Lenny Kravitz. Like that, like I want free Britney to fuck Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> that's what I want to see happen. But that's, I'm with you too. I want somebody like in their mid forties, maybe 50, oh, early fifties. She's 50s. 40. She's 40. Oh, that's we need true. somebody 50, 60, like Lenny Kravitz, Liam Neeson. They fit this bill. Yeah. Liam Neeson, to be fair, I think he's like 80, but whatever. <laughs> maybe he's like 70. God. All right. But definitely Lenny Kravitz. So that's my list. Like, Brittany, we've done the legwork for you. These are your available men. Make it happen. So now we have lady listener emails. <laughs> oh, she just needs, like, I always have mad respect for, like, Serena Williams. Like, she went and got, like, she didn't go yeah, get the regular football player. Man. She mm -hmm. went and got the smart billionaire, yep. millionaire, whatever he is. Yep. And he's like head over heels for her smitten mm -hmm. and he still has like you can tell he has a backbone oh yeah oh yeah yeah because he's so, so fucking smart yeah so it's just like <sighs> that's, that's what, what i, I always like. expect when i see all these girls dating all these players and rock mm -hmm. stars i'm like get out of here i want the guy who created reddit yeah <laughs> yeah the guy who created Groupon or Groupon. Well, you can see that with like with Serena though. I mean, their personalities I think are very similar. You know, they're both so smart. They're both so driven. They're both like they're just dedicated. And I think that dedication is sort of amplified in different ways. But mm -hmm. with her athleticism and his like you know work and stuff that he's done, the two of them are very similar in their their thoughts. That's what I feel like Brittany needs. She doesn't need someone that's crazy, but she needs someone that is an artist, that's passionate, that feels, you know, because you see her doing these twirl dancing videos, you know, on Instagram and people are like, oh, she's nuts. But it's like, no, that's her passion. She has no way to let this out for so long. Yeah. That's all she has. She needs someone to cultivate that. Yeah. And help her 
bring that back to her music. So, and maybe that's in a different way, you know, maybe that's not with you musician, maybe that's someone, but whoever it is she finds that's, you know, in the same way Serena is driven and Alexis is driven. I feel like the way Brittany's passionate, she needs someone who is equally as passionate, but a little bit more stable. Yeah. So like someone that's more established. That's what I'm saying. We, we got to go late fifties on this. She needs someone that's calm. Calm, but that has so much passion. So Lenny Kravitz, I feel like. I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal is a great addition to that because he's not like Hollywood, Hollywood, you know, yeah. but he's kind and sweet. But I do feel like he might be a little bit of a man whore on the side. So I don't know. I don't, know. I don't I read like about him. him a lot in the man whore stuff, but I don't know. He probably. Yeah. I don't know. I just have this vibe. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But like... So there were a couple of other single people that popped up that I was just like immediately like, no, you know, there were, I just didn't think that like Tom Hiddleston and stuff like that, where I'm just like, they're too big. They're too loved. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like they're, they don't seem like they're as accessible. Yeah. So now that we've figured this out though, like I think Brittany really needs to reach out to us. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, send us an email at readmeromance at gmail.com. Thanks. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm going to read some lady listener emails. All right. This is called Second Born No Limit Soldier, the 2014 edition. Oh, this is scary. <laughs> I didn't say, what about Eminem? <laughs> Emin no, no. <laughs> Speaking of addiction problems. All He's right, been this clean, hasn't he? Yes. But still, you don't want Bradley Cooper or Brad Pitt because of their That's addiction. True. You, you That's can't, true. you got to throw them all out at that point. All right. Carrie says, what's up, my fellow mothers of impossible children? I'm watching episode 138.1, the one where we send headstrong, no adult, tiny humans back to the schoolhouse to try and warn teachers who the fuck they're dealing with. The one where we try to teach the boss babies that they don't always have to choose violence. <laughs> <laughs> but keep your fire because you're going to need that shit later. Lee and I have often chatted about our No Limit Soldiers, Second Born Children, and we have come to the conclusion that the 2014 versions of the No Limit Soldiers just hit different. She's right. We say all the time, those 2014 editions hit different. A caretaker told me about an incident in which my kid made another one cry because he refused to play with him. I got, an I got all embarrassed, and she was like, no, that kid made your kid's friend cry earlier so Devin told him that until he learned how to play nicely he wasn't allowed to join them that's a reasonable boundary and it's a firm one do not make him question it oh I like that that's true it made me shift the way I parent him he probably is he's probably always going to be an assertive person and that's not a bad thing he just needs to work on his empathy so that he's not being domineering I have warned every caretaker and teacher about this kid and every single one says something similar once they get to know him. You never have to wonder with Devin. He'll let you know. I guess that means that while he is hard-headed little shit, well, he is a hard-headed little shit, he's a reasonable hard-headed little shit. All I can hope for is that he uses his powers for good because he's also charming. I'm shook. Send help. Not for me. He'll be fine for me. Not for him. He'll be fine for me, Carrie. I love her so much. I love her. I love that. All right. So, oh, and speaking of Britney Spears, I messaged or I posted up on Facebook. I said I wanted age gap stories. Mm -hmm. So a couple of people posted on the um, post on Read Me My Rents, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just going to do emails. So if you post it on there and I'm not reading it, send us an email. I've got, there were several, so I'll probably read more later. All right. This is age gap story. My little brother is 11 years younger than his wife. Hi, ladies. I have a sweet story for you. My little brother was a serial insta-love turned insta-breakup kind of guy for many years. He's brought, he's bought three engagement rings. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have an excellent story from one of his irate former fiancés, if you ever want to hear it. I do want to hear it. Please send back that story. From his late teens until he met his wife and when he was in his late 20s, they met on the Small World ride in Disney. Yes! Fell in love, and he brought up getting married to her pretty quickly. Of course, because why mess with a system that's clearly been so successful, right? <laughs> she said, nope. And when he asked why, I think his record for dumbassery was brought up, as well as the fact that they had not been dating all that long. 
they moved in together, rehabbed some houses together, moved around the country, but she continued to say no for eight more years until they finally married in 2010. Today, he's 45 and she's 56. They have no children and live the glam life in Southern California. As a pure coincidence, she is the same age as my husband. However, we are three and a half years apart in age. Not really an age gap, more like a maturity gap. As most guys are just about as wise as a bag of hair in their teens <laughs> in their teens and 20s. And for some, their early 30s too. LOL. Stay safe. They, or thanks, ladies. Stay safe. T in North Carolina. P.S. Yes. Refer to him as my little brother because at seven years younger than me, that's how we shall always be forever. That's sweet. Aww. All right, another H gap. Hey, ladies. So this is a first time for me writing in for a topic. Usually I'm too far behind on the podcast or miss the post, LOL. And really, this isn't my age gap story to tell, so as much as it is my dad's. To give a little backstory, my mom passed away my senior year of high school of ovarian cancer when she and my dad were 45. Aww. My dad dated some here and there after that, but nothing too serious. Then in 2006, he calls me out of the blue and says, I met someone. Being that he usually didn't tell me when he started dating someone new, this was unusual. I said, mm, okay. Then he said, I really like her, but, well, she's younger than me. I just wanted to see if you have a problem with that. My first question, uh, how young are we talking here? Is she younger than me? He said, no, she's not younger than you, but she's 15 years younger than me. At that time, he was 52, and she was getting ready to turn 37, which per put her around 12 years older than me. I honestly told him, it doesn't bother me. Do what makes you happy. They were married in 2007. They were married on 777. Aww. That's so cool. And have been happily married ever since. I gained two new sisters and a mother figure I can talk to, especially when, when my dad and I butt heads. And my dad now has five daughters, though luckily enough for him, we're all grown and moved out of the house. <laughs> This past summer, we were at the beach and were randomly discussing true crime shows and DNA. My dad piped up and said, well, uh, her stepmoms, she just put stepmoms in parentheses, DNA, probably got on your breakfast that she fixed you all this morning. She touched her butt while she was cooking. Oh, wait, that was me touching her butt. Then he grinned like a fool and stuck his tongue out and wiggled it. Oh, God, after wanting to bleach my eyeballs and pretend I never heard or saw that. I mean, this is my dad after all. I don't want to think about the two of them and his tongue. I couldn't help but smile at the two of them. They're obviously still very much in love, and I'm glad she's in our lives. Thanks, lady, as always, for the escape you provide with your stories and for the enjoyment I get out of listening to you each week on the podcast. It's always a pleasure, Michelle. I like that. That's really sweet. In your late 30s, you kind of know what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think yeah. that's too young to go. Mm-hmm. All right. This is from a new lady listener. Hey, ladies. I guess I'm a little late to the party, but I've just started listening to y'all's podcast the last few weeks while I work from home. I guess I've always been a little late to the party because I hold on. I think she just wait. No, wait. Mm, oh, wait. Sorry. I guess I've always been a little late to the party because I just started listening to the podcast. Oh, she just got married and I got married later in life and had kids later in life. However, I started reading romance books from a very early age. I'm dyslexic and didn't read a book from cover to cover until the summer after sixth grade when I was 12. My mother bought me three Harlequin romance books with a coupon at Walgreens because she was desperate for me to read something. <laughs> Much to her chagrin, I was hooked. I always say that I learned to read. I learned to read on smut. You know what? If somebody would given me smut when I was 12, you better believe I would have been a fucking reader. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm late to the party, I have a story that covers some of the listener questions you put out there early in your podcast. Not sure if you're still interested in any of these anymore, but I just wanted to send the story anyways. When I was 35 single and I lived in a small community, I was in the laundromat folding my delicates one day when a guy walked in. He started talking to me, but I never looked up or responded because here is some guy talking to me as I fold my underwear. <laughs> he was talking about how unusual the weather was for the day for a January in Texas which is where we were, but I just kept my head down and continued folding, folding my unmentionables. Then he adds, you know what they say, I'm not from Texas, but I got here as quick as I could. When he spoke those words, I had to lift my head to see who this guy was. For me, a native Texan, as might as well have been a pickup line. It was, it was the same my dad said all, said all my life. So when I looked up, I noticed that the guy who'd been talking to me was a new guy I had noticed around the community. 
I had originally thought he was married up until a few days before when I realized he was definitely not married to the woman I thought he was. I don't think I said anything to him really that day, but my interest was piqued. Anyway, I went to lunch after leaving the laundromat when some friends came to me and invited me to a game night in the common area at the building where we lived. I knew the guy I'd just seen, I knew the guy I'd just seen lived in the same building and I thought he might be there too, so I agreed. When I got there that Friday, my friends who invited me never showed up, but other friends of mine were there, and so was this guy. By the end of the night, I knew he was inter- he was interested in me too. However, he worked nights and weekends, and even though we talked even though we talked or saw each other in passing, it wasn't until a month later when we met out for coffee one night. As we sat talking in Starbucks, he said, I just want you to know, if this goes any further, I intend to marry you, okay? Stop. It took me a few more weeks of seeing him to finally realize that he was the man I wanted to marry. But it wasn't until he proposed to me that he told me that for him, it was love at first sight. He never had a doubt. We married six months later and have been t- been together so far over 16 years. Oh, it's just so a sad I know. Just a sad note. He went out of town and out of the country for business a little over a month after the Starbucks coffee date. While out of the country, he spent over $600 on telephone calls to me. That was <laughs> There was even one night he got locked out of where he was staying and had to sleep in his car because he'd gone outside to talk to me on the phone. But while he was gone, he bought my emerald engagement ring. I'm going to cry. I Even after this. all these years, he makes me giddy inside. Thanks for all you do. Keep them coming. That was the fucking sweetest thing ever. I That's love really that. cute. I love that. All right, we have one more quick one, and then we're going to end it. This says, I got a nice Bluetooth speaker for my birthday. I listened to the podcast on, on that instead of on my shitty beats headphones and your theme song fucking slaps i never knew <laughs> it slaps like like our theme song has got some like it's an awesome song that's what she's saying like, oh. our theme song slaps like it's got bass like it, it does really it's good. super yeah. catchy oh, no. lb came <laughs> up with that who leah talked about in last episode yep lb she sings the podcast theme song best friend so yeah, that's crazy. I saw that and I saw that email and it just like it, it tickled me seeing that their theme song slaps. <laughs> she didn't know it was so good until she listened to it on a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Now I just I just want to say I love that fucking story. I do the, too. Uh, that was just so sweet. Oh he was love at first sight. Oh. oh my gosh. All right. So speaking of happily ever afters. You want to go into the second installment yes, of Jake and by Joanna Blake? Before we go in, real quick, I just want to mention, um, check out our post about her signed book giveaways. Um, she has the new release that came out this week. Um, it is called Black Hearted. That's her mafia romance. Make sure you check that out. And um, also, join her um, Blake's Bombshell, her Facebook group. She posts all her new releases and everything else in there. And um, we'll be sure to link that in the show notes so you can join and um, all that good stuff. So let's go into the second half and afterwards. Chapter four, Colleen. The man towering above me was gentle as he pulled me close for a kiss. Our tongues tangled wildly as I melted against him. When he started to pull my clothes from my body, I didn't protest. I was just as eagerly pulling his shirt off his broad, muscular shoulders and pressing my lips to the lightly furred skin of his chest, tasting the faint salt on my lips. He made a sound of pure male appreciation. I wanted to hear that sound again. I wanted to do things to him, but I didn't know what or how. He lifted me higher so that my feet dangled as he kissed me again. I felt his big, strong hands wrap my legs around his waist and then grasped my cheeks and hips. His palms were hot and rough against my skin from his calluses. He pressed me down into a soft, white bed, never breaking the kiss as his manhood pressed against me, teasing my folds. I wanted him inside me. I needed something more. I opened my eyes and saw him above me. Jakin. Are you sure? he demanded in a raw voice. 
Yes, I breathed. Yes. He pressed forward, my lips parting for him as he became part of my body, part of my soul. Colleen! My eyes snapped open at the sound of a four-alarm scream coming from outside my bedroom door. I sat up, nearly pushing Lana out of the bed. Penny and the girls had taken over the girls' bedroom for the night, stacked in there like firewood. I sighed as I tiptoed down the hallway and peeked into the room. Lots of kids in the house. That meant lots of breakfast. Jacob had saved me from blowing my monthly food budget the night before with the pizza. It had been beyond generous of him to feed all of us. He'd even brought salad and some fun toys for the kids. No soda, though. He'd listened when I said that. It made me feel special. It made me feel seen. Don't go crazy, girl. It's just pizza. So maybe he does like you. He won't when he finds out you're a virgin. Men like him have women throwing themselves at them all the time. He doesn't need some silly girl cluttering up his social calendar. Still, it was nice to be wanted, even if only for a little while. And he hadn't been too forward about it. He just asked me to spend some more time together. I couldn't say no, even if I knew he was going to break my heart. Not just my heart, I thought with a wince. I'd had a dream about him. Scratch that, I'd had a sex dream about Jakin. Nothing like that had ever happened to me before. My cheeks were hot with embarrassment, but I had things to do. I quickly cleaned the living room and kitchen, washing the stray glasses that always seemed to accumulate and stowing toys and books onto the built-in shelves. Half-done homework was neatly stacked on the entry room bench or placed into notebooks and slipped into book bags. It was the weekend, I reminded myself. Even if I never relaxed, the kids deserved to. I'd make sure it was all finished on Sunday before my... plans. I started making pancakes. It was expensive, but the kids loved it. I decided to skip my morning run. It was Saturday after all, and I would be running all over the hotel for the wedding scheduled today. The couple was young, sweet, and so clearly head over heels in love with each other. It was nice to see, even though I never expected anything like that for myself. I had let go of bitterness about what my life had turned into long ago. As a kid, I'd had dreams of joining the Air Force, being a pilot, or a teacher, or a nurse, or all three, come to think of it. I'd fallen into hospitality and management completely by accident. Waitressing jobs were easier to come by and I hadn't had time or money for after-school classes or pre-college courses. Thankfully, I'd proven my worth immediately and quickly moved up the chain to managing the diner I worked in after school. That had led from job to job until I ended up doing most of the concierge work at a five-star hotel. And now I was taking over the wedding and event planning entirely. I did like the work, and it paid surprisingly well. But I still wanted to go to college full-time. Someday I would, when the last of the little buggers under my watch were safely on their way there themselves. It would be a long time for that, so I would keep taking my classes and putting one foot in front of the other. Speaking of my feet, I frowned at my toes. I had not given myself a pedicure in weeks. Between my early morning jogs and running around in heels at the hotel, the ballet pink paint job was needing a definite touch-up. I had to get ready, I thought, as I flipped the first batch of pancakes in the air. I had a date on Sunday night. An actual date, like a normal 20-year-old girl, I thought wistfully. And I decided something spontaneously. I decided I was going to let Jacob kiss me. Chapter 5 Jakin. I blessed Preacher mentally. He and Cynthia were still in town and had volunteered to babysit for Colleen, which meant I had her all to myself this evening. I wanted things to progress. I wanted her to trust me. I wanted to nail her to the wall with my cock. But that was a different matter altogether. It was hard to keep the images out of my mind. Images of us together, 
naked bodies writhing as we brought each other indescribable pleasure again and again. I'd start with her mouth, ravaging the soft petals as I stripped her bare. Then I'd move down her throat, kissing and tasting her soft skin, the tops of her breasts, her pink, pointy nipples. Earth to Jakin, she teased. Come in, Jakin. I smiled, glad we were in the dark. In my car, to be exact. An old Mustang I'd been restoring for years. For our date, I was taking Colleen to the drive-in movie theater. I had a nice picnic that Mason and his sweet wife had put together. Michelle was like a sister to me. She was younger, but she acted like a big sister all the same. She was a born mother, I thought fondly, just like Colleen was. The kind of women who just couldn't help taking care of everyone they cared about. Do you like spicy food? I asked pulling the picnic basket into the front seat as the previous started. Not really, she said, peering adorably into the basket. They don't eat that one, I said, laughing as I took a container of Mason's famous hot sauce out of her hand. Or that one. Nuclear option, huh? Definitely. Here, let me make you a plate. I doled out my favorites and tucked a napkin into her shirt top before putting the plate on her lap. She stared into my eyes, and I couldn't resist the urge to give her a quick kiss. Her eyes opened wide, but she didn't say anything. I pretended nothing had happened, even though that quick kiss had felt like fireworks going off in my chest. We ate in companionable silence, enjoying the start of the movie and each other's company. But after we ate, things changed. I put the basket in the back and scooted closer to her. I was elated when she did the same. We met in the middle of the big, long seat. Gotta love those vintage cars for romance and the lady. In no time, my arm was around her, and she was snuggled up to my chest. She was so tiny, and she fit perfectly against my shoulder. We touched each other a bit, tentatively at first. My fingers made lazy circles on the soft skin of our arm. I had to kiss her, and told her so. Can I? Yes, she nodded, sounding a little breathless. I tipped her chin up and tasted her gorgeous lips for the second time. This time, the kiss was a lot more involved. We moved in perfect unison, her lips opening when I exerted a subtle pressure. She sighed in pleasure as my tongue explored her mouth and my hand caressed her narrow back. The kiss deepened, our tongues moving in a dance that was getting more urgent and passionate by the second. Before I knew it, we were horizontal. I was on top of her petite body, my larger frame boxing her in and yet somehow fitting perfectly. Her thighs were together and I could feel her gorgeous breast pressed into my chest. I couldn't stop kissing her or touching her, though I resisted the nearly overwhelming urge to strip her and dive into her panties head first. She made a sound that made me tear my lips away, a mewling sound, not unlike a kitten, whether it was passion or protest, though I wasn't sure. Are you all right? I asked brushing her silky hair away from her beautiful face. She nodded, her eyes wide as she stared up at me. Just a girl. Even with the weight of the world on her shoulders, she was still just a girl. We are going too fast, I said, still not moving. We are? She asked innocently. She clearly had no idea that my dick was ready to burst out of my jeans and sing hallelujah. Yes. Okay. I don't want to rush you, she said sweetly as I sat up and helped her rearrange herself. I laughed ruefully. It's not too fast for me. I would be happy if we were in my bed right now. I would be ecstatic. Oh? She said, blushing a bright pink that I could see even in the darkness of the car. I want you to be mine. Your girlfriend? 
she sounded surprised. Did she not know how desirable she was? For starters, yes. Oh, she breathed, her voice sounding pleased. Okay. In that case, I pulled her against me again. I wasn't going to fuck her in my car. Not the first time, anyway. But I could do a little more touching. Maybe I could even bring her to the edge and make her come. I wondered if it would be her first time. I want to touch you, I said, my fingers tracing the edge of her bra strap. Okay, she said, and I groaned, my hands eagerly closing over her curves. I was gentle at first, teasing her nipples to form hard points through her shirt and bra. Then I slipped my hand under her shirt. Is this okay? Yes. Yes, please. I would have laughed the polite way she answered me if I hadn't been in agony of desire. The plan to warm her up a little bit each time was backfiring. She might be warm, but I was on the verge of exploding. And that was just from touching the bare skin of her chest. <sighs> she moaned softly as my fingers pulled down her bra cups and pushed her shirt up. I pulled one nipple into my mouth, plucking the other with my fingertips. Her hands wove into my hair, gently at first, and then with more urgency. Christ, I gasped, raising my head to look at her. Can I take this a little further? She nodded looking dazed but more than willing. She was aroused, maybe as much as I was, though I doubted she understood what that meant. But I knew. It meant that I needed to bring her to climax, right here and right now. It might kill me to do it without coming myself, but there was no way in hell I was letting the lady go home unsatisfied. Good, I said slipping my hand under her skirt to caress her thigh. Very good. Chapter 6 Colleen His hand was there, or nearly there, so close to where I wanted it. But he made no move to touch me through my panties. Jakin just kept kissing me, caressing my thigh and tugging on my nipples with his other hand. I was ready to jump out of my skin. I wanted something, but I wasn't sure what. Finally, his fingers brushed the thin cotton of my panties. Once. Twice. I moaned into his mouth, wanting more. Can I pull these to the side? Yes, I whispered, barely trusting myself to speak. I felt cool air as he tugged on my panties and exposed my lips. His fingers toyed with me slowly. He was so gentle. And when his thumb started to circle on the sensitive nub, I nearly fainted with the pleasure of it. I want to taste you, he murmured. I want to kiss you there. <gasps> oh, I had never been touched like this before. I was so nervous but I was also curious. I wanted to know what it f might feel like, and I couldn't say no. Okay. Lie back, he said quickly, pushing my skirt to my waist as I did as he asked. Part your thighs, he instructed as I let him arrange my body to his liking. It was dark in the car, but I could see his eyes focused between my legs on my bare pussy. I nearly lost my nerve, but I was tingling with anticipation. I had never wanted anyone or anything as badly as I wanted Jacob to touch me in that moment. Are you sure? He asked needlessly. I nodded quickly, and thankfully, things moved faster after that. His hands were on my thighs, holding me open and exposed to his eyes. I whimpered as he kissed me there running his tongue up and down my body before settling in, his shoulders wedging between my thighs. 
I clenched my fist as he pushed his tongue inside me, his fingers finding my clit and started to strum it like a guitar. Oh, my goodness. The combination of his rough hands and hot, wet mouth on my bare pussy was unbelievable. I was going to explode, and soon, but that he stopped. Is this okay? I moaned incoherently, and he grinned at me, looking pleased with himself. I nearly grabbed his head and shoved it back between my thighs. All my shyness was gone. I wanted this, and I wanted it now. He began again, this time carefully slipping a finger inside of me as he stared down at my opening. I shivered as his breath fanned my wet folds. So sweet, he murmured, so tight. His lips found my clit and pulled on it hard, flicking his tongue against me rapidly. My body arched up so hard and fast that I nearly hit the dashboard. He held me down with one hand on my belly as he made a meal out of me. I started shaking as light filled my being. I wondered if everyone could see it. It's brighter than the movie projector, I thought mindlessly. Brighter than the moon, brighter than the stars. So that is what the fuss is all about, I thought as I drifted back to reality. I felt like I was floating in a pool or in the ocean. My body was heavy and light at the same time, hot and cold, tingling and yet profoundly satisfied. But Jake didn't stop. He spent the rest of the movie bringing me to climax after climax. And when he dropped me home that night, he kissed me and asked when he could see me again. It had better be soon, he added between kisses. I could feel his arousal. I knew he hadn't gotten what he wanted, but he had promised me that he didn't want to rush things. And that next time we could spend some quality time together in an actual bed. Chapter 7 Jaken Two weeks, two weeks of wanting her, of taking my time, of not rushing her, of falling in love with one beautiful, precious girl, a girl who also happened to be a virgin. Tonight was the night I would make her mine. My house was nothing fancy. It was a rental, just a well-kept hunting cabin owned by one of the untouchables. But it was clean and ready for her arrival. And I had plans for a much bigger place. A place for all seven of us to live. A place for all of us to have kids and grow the family even more. A real home. Because that's what she was to me. Colleen was my home. My family. She was more than I'd ever dreamed of. I needed to make her see that, to agree to my plans. Thankfully, she was a healthy young woman and seemed to respond very positively to my touch. Tonight, I would use that responsiveness to my advantage when we made love for the first time. I would tell her I loved her and get her to agree to move in with me. Then, I would tell her about the money I had saved, the house I was planning to build for us, I already had the land packed out. I already had a crew of untouchables ready to build it. I unlocked the door and let her step in first, holding the door open for her. I'd picked her up and would take her home later tonight, or very early in the morning. Her sister was home and would watch the kids. I didn't need to worry. More importantly, she didn't need to worry. Another dinner from Ma's, but this time she'd broken out the old school recipes. I'd helped her plan and cook it. Cass, Michelle, and Becky had helped me spruce the place up with candles and twinkling lights around the porch and front windows. I quickly lit the candles and pulled out a seat, tucking Colleen in securely at the small, round kitchen table. It wasn't much, but it looked good in the candlelight. Speaking of which... You look beautiful. Thank you, she said, primely putting her napkin in her lap. So do you. That sent a feeling of contentment right through me, right through my chest. I watched her eat, trying not to shove the plates off the table and make a meal of her instead. 
She is a nice girl, I reminded myself. Treat her with respect. But after dinner, I promised the slobbering beast inside me. After dinner, I will finally get what I want. The meal went quickly. I asked questions, careful not to reveal that I knew things I shouldn't about our history. Fucking up the best thing that ever happened to me was definitely not on the agenda. I cleared the table when the meal was over. She jumped up to help, and we laughed as we bumped into each other in the tiny kitchen. I let the dishes clatter as I dropped them into the sink and took what I really wanted. Her lips. I kissed her, pressing her back against the kitchen countertop. Soon our clothes were coming off. I bent down to my knees to worship her bare breast and taste the honey pot between her gorgeous legs. I draped her thigh over my shoulder, opening her so I could enjoy her thoroughly. The feel of her, the taste, and the sexy little sound she made all had me ready for the main event. But she was tiny. I was big. I'd been preparing her ever since that night at the drive-in. I knew I would still have to go slowly. I want to take you to the bedroom now. Yes, she sighed as I lifted her up and carried her across the cabin. Yes. I laid her down on the bed and took a moment to admire her, to appreciate the bounty I was about to receive. Then I started to strip. Her eyes were wide as I removed my pants and pushed my boxers down. Shaken, she said nervously. You are? I'll go slowly, I promised, kissing my way up her body until I was above her, poised at her entrance. And I will stop at any time if you want me to. I kissed her deeply, my cock nudging against her entrance. Do you want me to? Stop? No. A swell of tenderness and admiration filled me, battling with the lust. This perfect girl was giving herself to me. What I had done to deserve her, only the good Lord knew. I notched my tip just inside her and pressed forward, watching her face carefully for signs of pain. The first time didn't have to hurt. I'd found out with some pointed advice from the girls. They had sent me to the internet to do some googling, so my goal was to simply nudge any barrier aside instead of tearing through it, as I'd grown up thinking was the only way to deflower a lady. It was hard to think as her body opened up and welcomed me in. The fit was snug, too snug to do much maneuvering when I could go no farther. This was it. The moment of truth. Honey, I don't want to hurt you. It's okay. Let me try something, okay? She nodded, and I reached between us, rubbing my thumb over her clit. She gasped, and her body relaxed slightly before she clamped down on me and started to come. Christ, she felt good. Too good. It was almost too much but I had to stay focused on her. I circled my hips until I was past the barrier and slid the rest of the way home. Colleen was still climaxing, making me want to ride her fast and hard. After two weeks of near constant arousal, the Lord above knew I was more than ready. Her tremor started to fade, and I began to move. We stared into each other's eyes as we made love for the first time the first of many times to come. I wanted a lifetime of this, of the breathless, beautiful woman in my arms, a lifetime of her smiles, laughter, and, yes, her gorgeous body wrapped up with mine. As I reached the end, I couldn't stop myself from whispering the truth to her, that I loved her, that I wanted her forever. I wasn't sure if she heard me, we were both too dazed. We held each other and talked late into the night. When I woke up in the morning, she was gone. All that she left was a note. Jaken, I found this. I don't know if this is a sick joke or if this is part of your game. I never want to see you again. 
Colleen. I stared in horror at the manila photo that Trace had given me what felt like a million years ago. I'd already loved her then, but she couldn't know that. I had to tell her. I had to explain. I pulled on my motorcycle jacket and ran down to the street, mounting my bike and riding like the devil was on my heels. And with what I was on the verge of losing, it felt like he truly was. Chapter 8 Colleen What are you doing here? I asked the impossibly handsome man standing on the walkway. I noticed he didn't come to the porch. Even now he's respectful, a tiny voice said inside me. Maybe you should hear him out. Colleen, it's not what you think. What do you think I think? I asked, crossing my arms over my chest. Thought this was a game or something like that, but it wasn't. I've been deadly serious since the start. I narrowed my eyes but didn't stop him when he took a step forward. He had his hat in his hand, literally. Well, his motorcycle helmet anyway. I fell for you that first night, even before what happened with the Hellraisers. I wanted to make sure I knew what I was getting into, that I'd be, that I'd be good for you. Why wouldn't you be good for me? I'm the one whose life is a mess. Your life is not a mess. It's hard. Christ, I don't know how you do it sometimes, but you are the strongest damned person I know. He ran his hand through his hair as he paused for a moment. I didn't speak, but I had to admit I was mollified. There are things about me that you might not like, but I'll tell you now if you listen. I nodded slowly, stepping back and sitting in one of the rocking chairs on the porch. He spoke slowly at first, sitting on the porch stairs, but then his story gained speed. I listened as the ice around my heart started to melt. He'd taken the fall for someone, for family. He'd stopped some hot-headed boys from building a device that could have hurt a lot of people. But it was his fingerprints they'd found when the garage was raided. He'd refused to turn in his little brother. Instead, he'd been smuggled out of the country and to the United States. He'd been on the move ever since. And now, he was thinking about going home. To turn himself in. So that he'd be good enough for me. You can't, I said firmly, standing up and tapping my toe. They'll throw away the key. Maybe, maybe not. But I can't keep running. I can't keep lying. Not if I want to be the right man for you. That's what you want? To be the man for me? I love you, woman. Can't you see that? I couldn't help it. I started to cry. Then stay here. We'll figure this out together. There has to be another way. He pulled me into his arms. You don't hate me then? For being a creepy stalker? I don't hate you, I said through tearful kisses. I thought about you too after that night. You did now, did you? He teased. Were they impure thoughts? They were. My favorite kind. Six months later. Jakin. A crowd was gathered outside as I led Colleen down the walkway to our new home. To our new home. Her eyes were closed under a blindfold, so I scooped her into my arms, worried that she might trip on her cute little feet. Jakin? She squealed in protest. Almost there. I squeezed her, grinning down at the cute little package in my arms. She was the perfect woman for me. She might be the most perfect woman on earth, as far as I was concerned. I set her down on her feet, and Penny handed me the giant scissors I'd gotten just for this occasion. Open your eyes, sweetheart. She barely breathed as she stared at the heavy wooden front door to our new house wrapped in a bright pink ribbon. Caught the ribbon, love. The crowd of friends and family erupted as I carried her over the threshold. Kids and bikers were everywhere, eating, drinking, and talking. It was family. It was home. She hadn't wanted to talk about marriage. Not yet. But today we were moving in together. And I didn't want to live in sin. Not for long, anyway. 
Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? I asked, dropping to my knee. The room got quiet. She nodded and I was up like a shot, pulling her into my arms and kissing her. I almost forgot the ring, I said, slipping Nan's ring onto her finger. I'd gone home to get it after my brother had turned himself in. He was serving a light sentence since he hadn't actually gone through with the crime and had been a juvenile at the time. Still, he had quite a few years to serve. Colleen and I planned to visit him soon. He'd made mistakes, but he was paying for them, and he gave me my life back. A life I had no intention of squandering. I love you, Colleen Winston. And I love you, Jaken Colin O'Neill. This has been Jaken by Joanna Blake. Read for you by James R. Cheatham. Welcome back. Hi. Thanks so much for being with us, Joanna. We really appreciate you coming in clutch. So yes. we hope you love Jaken. It was a lot of fun for us to do that this week. So um, be sure and join us next week because we've got, I can't do a drum roll or I would. We've got Rebecca Gallo. Um, I want to double check and make sure that's how you say her lesson. Gallo. I think that's it. G-A-L-L-O. Um, she wrote us a book called Heart Campaign. She was so sweet and excited to be on the podcast. I can't wait. She's, um, we message back and forth on Instagram and stuff, and she's always just so, so nice. So I can't wait to have her on here and talk about all her good books and stuff like that. So be sure and join us next week for a brand new book. All right. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book that's fine, or you could sit back.